Hello, it is now Monday the 16th of March and how things can change in a few days, eh? Blimey. So we were away for about four days at IB's and we had lots of commitments for the Sunday. But after my gig on Saturday, which I didn't vlog, I just wanted to go home with Izzy and process this whole coronavirus thing and decide what to do. And I've done some processing now after my good night's sleep and one of the realisations I've come to is that although I am worried about getting the coronavirus and obviously worried that Isabel would get the coronavirus, I don't think either of us will get it that badly. So my main worry is being a vector and spreading it around. So I'm worried that we might have contracted it but be asymptomatic. So. We're just going to stay home for a bit, just in case. Another strategy of mine is to be really well rested. Okay, so it looks like my music work's all going to dry up, so I'm going to have more time to sleep. And so that's what I'm going to do. So the way we're changing our timetable for like the homeschooling is me and Izzy are just going to get up when we wake up. We're not going to set alarms. So that way, if it gets us, we'll be not run down. We'll, we should be quite healthy from a sleep perspective. I'm going to try and make sure that we eat as well as we can. Lots of vitamins and things and just keep healthy. I have done two more Kaylee gigs since I last filmed that one that you last saw, which was from about a week and a half ago. Well, as a week and a half ago as I'm filming this. But honestly, I'm just getting more and more uncomfortable doing them because it's just so much physical contact. In the last book one, people were visibly using the hand sanitizer gels. They literally had things hanging off their belts with them in, little mini ones. And so they were doing that a lot. And they were back and forth to the loose, coming back, you know, shaking jets off their hands. I know you're supposed to dry your hands properly, but they were clearly, you know, they had clearly just given their hands a good wash. There was a lot of that. And the very last one, there were wet wipes. It was like a wet wipe frenzy. They had, it was a very small one. There weren't more than about 16 dancers at any one time, I think. Maybe 20 absolute max. I did a bit of a head count. So like a square set has eight people in it. So there were mostly two square sets and then a couple of people sitting out taking photos or having a drink or whatever. So really it was a very small gathering. Um, but I still was uncomfortable with it and they were wet wiping frantically in between every single dance but I still just thought I was worried about it so anyway I don't think we're gonna get any more bookings now until this whole thing has peaked and died down considerably and then who knows what kind of a financial situation everybody's gonna be in with regards to booking bans I don't know it's just rippling out <sighs> almost infinitely isn't it just the whole money situation thing. So we don't know at this stage how things will pan out. I've written myself a little list of things to do today. First thing I did was ring my mum because I haven't actually spoken to her in all this time. I've spoken to my dad but I haven't spoken to my mum. She's not much of a, a phone person. She only rings like for something like functional. Like if she needs something. She, she doesn't really do chatting but she did today. Yeah for ages. I was impressed. Um, so I do I feel really sorry for everybody that's over 70 that's got to stay home for four months because not everybody's you know in a big setup are they lots of people will literally be on their own and the thing is with over 70s it's not all of them because I know a lot of tech savvy over 70s who are on more social media than me but certainly uh, with respect to my own mother like she would never do an online shop. She would doesn't want to use WhatsApp, Skype, email is a technological challenge for my mum. It's just like no, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> she will do email, so I think email might be the the portal. But you know, I can't I can't ring her ring her every day because my phone bill's going to be enormous. I needed to go on WhatsApp. I just I, I don't know if she'll if she'll make that step. She needs somebody to do it for her. I just set it up on her phone and show her how to use it. And we can't, I don't want to go anywhere near her. I'm miles away from her. If they stop the public transport, I won't even be able to get down there anyway. Oh, it's a nightmare. Hopefully, one of her friends nearby will show her how to get on WhatsApp. Oh, I don't know. 
God, she's... Anyway, I'm going to do her online shops for her. She doesn't do online banking, so I'm not quite sure how she's going to pay me for that. So I don't know how many months I can pay for her shopping <laughs> before I run out of money if I'm not working. Uh, but we'll get around it. You can, you can put checks in to your mobile app. There's a, a I don't know if you know this, you can... If you've got a physical paper check, you can like scan the image and put it in. It's got to be under a certain amount, but I think it's like a lot, you know, whatever the uh, amount is. I'll have to check for you and put it on the screen by there. Oh, we'll work it out, oh, won't we? We'll work it out. Meanwhile, Izzy's doing maths, of course. I think she's rather hoping to get out of it, but no, I think we've got to just crack on with that. So my list of things is going to involve human contact but minimal so I've got to call the dentist so our dentist appointment got cancelled ages ago and I haven't got around to making a new one I don't know whether I should make an appointment quick now and try and get in quick <laughs> get all the, the gnashes looked at and uh, you know a bit of a clean and polish because heaven only knows when we'll get in again and Izzy hasn't had hers looked at so I don't know that's I'll ring them and see what they think. The other thing is to call a plumber because, right, I feel ashamed. I am ashamed of myself. I cannot fix my tap. It's dripping. It's not dripping as much now. When it's warmed up, the sun's been shining on it. When it's had the hot tap on for a bit or the sun's on it, the drip slows down. So I think something is expanding and contracting inside. And I've asked IB if you could have a look at it and he just doesn't know how to do it. He said, you're going to have to get a plumber, love. I'm really sorry, I can't do it. I don't know how to do those ones. It looks complicated because it's uh, like a fancy splitter thingy. Oh, so I really, I feel really annoyed with myself, but I don't want to risk it, having water squirting everywhere and being on my own and having no support. So I'm just going to have to take the pain and ask a plumber to change a washer for me. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> anyway, that was my confession. I can play you a sonata, no problem. Ask me for a set of 32 bar jigs, no problem at all. Change a washer. <laughs> right, okay, anyway, the builder didn't come, did he? So I'm thinking I should call the builder and try and get my roof sorted. I don't know if that's the best timing. I don't think it's actually leaking. I think it was just during Storm Dennis, the rain like went up under <laughs> the rafters and got in, but I'm not entirely sure. So I thought I should at least ring him. Um, I've got a hospital appointment myself on Wednesday, which is for ophthalmology. And in order to go to that, I'll need to go two buses each way. And I just don't want to. I don't want to in case I've got the virus. And don't know. Because those buses are full of OAPs. Because that's their only means of getting about. And I just, I don't want to go on there with them in case. So I'm going to ring the hospital and see what they think. It's not an emergency. You see, last summer I had flashing in one eye. I always get it. It's an optical migraine, I think. And I've had loads, over the years, I've had loads and loads of tests in hospitals to work out why I get this flashing. But when it comes, it lasts for a year, you know, and it's quite annoying. And it's there all the time, even when I've got my eyes... Oh no, that's a news update. <sighs> even when I've got my eyes shut, I can still see the flashing. What else am I doing? doing an online shop for my mum yeah and homeschooling of course all day but thing is we can just do our lessons whenever we want now because we've got no pressure to get out I might review this whole staying at home thing in after five days I might go out Izzy wants to go to a class if she wants to see her friends but I'm going to do a minimum of five days and then review it and decide see what is still running in the way of her groups and classes another one of my own personal strategies that I've decided to adopt is really don't waste food really try not to cook too much because i'm terrible for cooking too much food on purpose so that we have it for leftovers the next day so i don't have to cook twice which is kind of a good strategy unless you forget about it so i need to be really organized and make sure that if i do that we definitely eat it i'm literally going to write down eat leftover spaghetti at the lunchtime slot on a bit of paper because really if you know, if it's getting awkward to get food, then we need to not waste it. Another thing I've learned, which you probably know by now because you're all following the same thing as me, but another thing that I learned in the last few days 
was that soap and you know hand soap in a dispenser does actually kill viruses see i just thought it washed it off and sent it all swishing off down the drain and i was thinking where will the viruses end up so this is what i understand from what i read the other day the membrane the outer membrane of the virus is a lipid one it's made of fat or oil you know it's a fatty oily outer skin well you know what it's like if you've got some greasy washing up water and you just put a tiny drop of squeezy liquid in it, it just goes doesn't it? it all separates out well apparently the soap itself it does that to the membrane of the virus it literally breaks it apart uh, and kills it dead so I was on Friday I was like literally looking for alcohol wipes to clean my phone with no, according to the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, just in case you're American, I don't know who the BBC is. I don't know, I don't know if Americans know who the BBC is. Anyway, uh, according to them, you can literally just get a damp microfiber cloth, put a bit of hand soap on it, just give your phone a wipe with it, and then dry it off with another cloth afterwards, and that will get rid of any potential virus on your phone. Right, I'm going to get on with my list. I'm on hold. To the hospital. Plumber didn't answer, so I texted him and sent a photograph of the offending tap. The dentists were engaged with no answer phone option. And the hospital, apparently, I'm number nine in the queue. I've never ever rung the hospital appointments number and not got straight through before. So I think maybe people are cancelling their appointments. Still number nine. It's now 20 to 3 in the afternoon. I really haven't achieved very much today. We've been a bit distracted, Izzy and I, with this whole corona thing. You know, it's quite hard to settle down and concentrate on things because some things just seem comparatively superficial all of a sudden. And so it's quite hard to stay motivated to keep focused on it. So all she's done today is maths. Um, the plumber is coming, apparently, which is good because that's just dripping. <laughs> I'm trying to collect it up and just use the water because I hate wasting the water. But anyway, my Paddy's Day gig got cancelled, obviously, for next, well, for tomorrow. Uh, and then we got another one within the space of hours of it being cancelled, which we did accept last week. So that was in our books and then that was cancelled. And another one just came in today and I just said no because I just feel wrong about mixing everybody up and encouraging people to form big gatherings at this time. So I just said no on moral grounds, really that so I hope I didn't offend anybody sorry if I did anyway um what else am I gonna say we are making coffee we're gonna do biology now we're gonna do photosynthesis and I need to just tidy up because the table's a big mess it is all cluttered as you see did I tell you I got through to the hospital appointments thingy and cancelled it and they were just absolutely fine with it they said it would probably be cancelled anyway I explained that I was worried about going on four buses full of people over 70 basically and not knowing if I was a vector or not and she was just totally fine with it and uh, she said I'll just book you one for later in the year so okay that's that done I couldn't get through to the dentist I haven't tried again since I kind of forgot <laughs> uh, yeah that's it I haven't done mum's online shop yet I might do that this evening she's not desperate for it anyway so later still it's the evening I've been doing some literature with Izzy now you see this tap here it's days are numbered He's tightened the bit up inside, Mr. Plumber that is, still dripping a little bit, but um, there's like a kind of inverted cog, like with coggy teeth on the inside in there, and they're all completely like worn down, and so it just can't be tightened, and he said he could attempt to find a part to fix it with, but in his opinion it's just cheaper and easier to just replace the whole unit, so that's what we're doing, and he's gone off to get that, and me and Izzy are getting back to literature. Just wanted to show the vlog my latest drawing. It is of Melanie Martinez's tour outfit, and I really like it. And stay tuned for the next vlog because I have a surprise. Don't I, Mummy? <laughs> yeah, she does. Big surprise. I know. Nobody was more surprised than me. Isabel has a little announcement for you tomorrow. <laughs> oh wow. Four minutes past five and we're sitting here reading literature, uh, literature, <laughs> it's over there, I've just put it down, and the news is in, it's just in now, finally, finally, our government has decided we've all got to isolate 
Here it is, look. UK Prime Minister says everyone should now avoid social contact with others and stop non-essential travel to fight coronavirus. That's all there is so far, look, because it's literally just... just come in. Putting the news on now. Oh my it's goodness. You're watching a BBC News special with the latest on the coronavirus pandemic and we'll be live in Downing Street for the Prime Minister's news conference very shortly. So far, there are 1,543 confirmed cases of the virus in the UK. Government ministers have today held an emergency COBRA meeting to discuss measures to protect the elderly and vulnerable. Boris has just said he's still keeping the schools open. All of these measures are about looking after the people who could get really sick with it. We know that children, thankfully, don't appear to be one of those groups, although they can spread it. Um, we know that if kids are off school, who's going to look after them? Chances are it could be vulnerable people looking after them. Um, but obviously there's ramifications as well for healthcare workers. If their children were off, they can't be looking after people in hospital. There you have it. Mm. It's now 20 to 8 in the evening. The plumber is finished. It took him ages. He had a problem. So he went out and bought the tap and then he came back and he was fitting it when he, I think he broke something and needed to replace it. So he had to go out again. So it took two hours. But come and look at my nice new taps. Come on. Excuse the mess. I haven't been able to get to the sink for a couple of hours, but look. Ta-da! <laughs> Gleaming and shining. That is much nicer than the old one. It must have been so surreal for him to be crouching down there on my floor with his head under my sink while on the news, live, he could hear Boris Johnson doing his big address to the masses about everyone starting to avoid social contact with others. Don't go to bars. I, I should probably tell you what everything is now just for posterity. So I know all the UK based viewers who are watching now in contemporary time will know exactly what this is but people might be watching in years to come like maybe centuries to come because you know this is going to be one of those things people study in history probably in years to come. You know I'm a home educator so you know got to put resources out there for people uh, and you know people in other countries might not know what the guidelines are so I'm gonna have a look and tell you oh god the West End the West End has shut down Isabel is gonna be running down the stairs telling me that soon because she is so up to date with anything to do with musicals anything it's her absolute life obsession she was running down the stairs telling me when Broadway shut down, so the West End has followed suit now. Oh my goodness. Right, so now, as of the 16th of March 2020, the government has announced that everyone should avoid gatherings and crowded places such as pubs, clubs and theatres. Everyone should work from home if they can. All unnecessary visits to friends and relatives in care homes should cease. By next weekend, those with the most serious health conditions must be largely shielded from social contact for around 12 weeks. The UK is now three weeks behind Italy, which is the worst hit country in Europe. If one person in any household has a persistent cough or fever, everyone living there must stay at home for 14 days. Those people should, if possible, avoid leaving the house, even to buy food or essentials, but they may leave the house for exercise and, in that case, at a safe distance from others. Schools, however, will not be closed for the moment. Chief Medical Advisor Professor Chris Whitty said the group of people who should take particular care to minimise their social contact were people over the age of 70, so that's both my parents, other adults who would normally be advised to have the flu vaccine, such as those with chronic disease, and pregnant women. Well, Lizzie had to have the flu vaccine because of the medication she's on, but the dermatologist did say she wasn't in the at-risk group. And now Izzy's in the bath and wants macaroni cheese urgently. It's really unsettling and odd and spooky when really everyday mundane things are like juxtaposed with really extreme otherworldly stuff which you would normally only see in horror films and sci-fi movies. It's very bizarre. It's taking me a long time to process it all. Like last week as things were just rapidly accelerating I was reading it all and I was taking it in 
on a sort of intellectual level, but not on an emotional level at all. It's like bypassing the emotions totally. And I'm like that. I was saying to IB, I don't feel it straight away. It takes me quite a while. It's just like the feelings bit comes later. I noticed that starting to happen to me when Izzy was very ill when she was, I don't know, maybe when she was four, when she, her eczema was really, really bad before she came out of school. Like, she was flared up all over and I'd have to put ointments on her that would just be agony for her and she would scream and scream and scream. And I had to just do that constantly throughout the day. Bathing her was like torture and I think at that point I just disconnected emotionally and so, I don't know. I think I still have, but it's starting to hit home now. It's like little things are sort of making me have a wobble now. Little things. I don't know, I imagine my mum having an Easter egg on her own at Easter, and I thought, oh. So little things like that will set me off, but the really big things haven't actually filtered through yet, so. Anyway, oh, you can't see Izzy, because you can't see Izzy till tomorrow as well, because she's got a bit of a surprise view regarding her appearance but i'm gonna cook some macaroni cheese now and i'll see you in the next one keep safe everybody bye you didn't just give the game away did you no i crawled she crawled <laughs> see you tomorrow bye